Scott and I recently had 24 hours in Port Macquarie in mid-north New South Wales. In this video we show what we were able to fit in to that short time. The first thing we saw was the 2023 Saltwater Freshwater Festival at Westport Park. The festival is a coming together of the Burpai, Birupai, Wallamai, Dungari and Gumbangi nations of the New South Wales mid-north coast. It is a celebration of culture, art, dance, music, food and kinship. The festival had numerous times throughout the day with different dance groups. Dances and songs tell stories of traditional life with themes like hunting, gathering seeds to grind flour and make bread, the pelican song and lots of other animal songs. It was so good to see all the different generations involved in the dances and throughout the whole festival, from little kids through to the older generations. The elders tent gives a space where people both indigenous and non-indigenous can sit down and speak with and hear from the elders. An elder is a respected leader in Aboriginal culture and they are the person people go to for wisdom, direction, 
history, cultural tradition, and permissions. There was also a yarning tent where we could sit and hear from and ask questions of a panel, usually consisting of elders. We could talk about important topics of national unity between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australians, about the way forward together as one united nation, and what their thoughts are on the voice to Parliament, and that was an interesting discussion. It was very interesting and encouraging to hear the hopes for equality, equity and intention to build national unity. This humorous song and dance was about following the bees, gathering honey and getting stung in the process. We spent several hours at the festival, which took us into the late afternoon. Our next stop was the Port Macquarie Koala Hospital, and this hospital is run by 200 committed volunteers. Entry is free, but a donation is acceptable if you choose to offer it. The hospital is also supported by the International Fund for Animal Welfare, Taronga Zoo, the Australian Museum in Canberra, the University of Sydney, a veterinary group called Vetnostics, Lions International and the NRMA. Koalas may be brought to the hospital by members of the public who have found an injured koala, either by a road accident, habitat loss, bushfires, disease or other issues. If you bring a koala to the hospital, it's important to note where the koala came from. This is because koalas will only feed on specific eucalyptus trees native to their local area. Identifying the area helps the volunteers and vets know which eucalypt to feed this particular koala. Unfortunately, some of these koalas will never be able to be released into the wild due to their injuries and socialisation with humans. I enjoyed spending time watching this young guy feeding. According to one of the volunteers, he, this one seems to eat all day. He had one eye missing and he was just quite content to just sit and eat and give us a nod every now and then. 
The volunteers aren't sure where some of these koalas came from, which is another reason some of them can't be released, because of the feeding needs as Heather mentioned earlier. We took an evening walk and were amazed at the clear water and beautiful warm weather for June. It was mid 20s Celsius, which is really pleasant. There were so many people out and about walking their dogs and hanging out together, but there were too many at the lighthouse and we couldn't get a car park there. It was nice to take some time to relax while watching the sunset over the river mouth and beaches and to hear the waves and birds. There were whales off in the distance passing on their migration path. We stayed at the Macquarie Waters Hotel and hung out on our balcony for a couple of drinks and enjoyed watching the blue hour and lights coming on. There were so many lorikeets flying around looking for a place to roost. We were right under the flight path of these flying foxes. There were thousands of flying foxes flying over for at least an hour. The morning walk went along the coastline from the river mouth. The breaker walls at the river mouth have personalised messages for as far as the eye can see. Now I'm not sure how this works, whether you sponsor a rock or just rock up and paint one. If you know how this works, please comment below. We picked out the ones with the Volkswagens and some other colourful ones. I don't know who the Nangas are, but there's a lot of them.
Along the walk are lots of wildflowers. These banksias were huge. This looks like a beautiful place for a ceremony. The little shack is a coffee shop right at the river mouth. And the signpost points out so many other things that you could do when you're in Port Macquarie. We spent the morning at the Sea Acres Rainforest Walk. The entry and exit to this walk is via the gift shop, which includes a bustling cafe. To do the walk, there is a park fee of $9 per adult and $5 per school aged child, or $20 for a family of five. This is a great walk along a raised boardwalk through native forest. Signage along the way gives information about the plant and animal species in the forest, as well as fascinating information about the way the local Aboriginal people use the plants for food, medicine or crafting. We'd like to thank Joan, one of the park's employees who stopped and chatted with us for a while and gave us some interesting information and encouraged us to look out for the powerful owl. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see the owl, but we enjoyed looking for it and hearing all the other bird life among the trees. Thanks, Joan. This was our 24 hours in Port Macquarie and there's so much more to see and do, including museums and other historical sites, tons of beaches, parks, cafes and shopping. We don't know where we're going next, but we know we want to spend those minutes with mates. <laughs>